G'day guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another video on the channel. Um, so I'm filming this in an interim while Rex is busy doing uh, fixing up the tray on this ute that we've been working on. Uh, I figure there is a very, very long overdue video that I sort of owe everyone, and that is an update on the uh, white turd down here in the shed. So I decided I'll, um, I'll pull it out, bring it up here, give it a bit of a wash, give everyone a bit of an update. Um, not only that, obviously, I think since since I started that car and sort of parked it there and I've since not really touched it, there are a lot of new viewers that probably have no idea anything about it. So I figure I'll bring it up. Um, I've got a few cost updates to give you all. I'll give you an update on the project and I'll go through the actual uh, idea for the project from start to finish uh, for all you new viewers who are you know new around here. So thanks for watching. If you're new around here, hit subscribe, comment, and uh, yeah, we'll go, go have a look at what's going on here. It is warm out here today. It is a hot hours day. Not ideal, but anyway, what you get. Oh, look at the poor old thing. All covered in crap. Covered in bird shit. We have a problem with this shed. The, uh, the swallows get in here and nest up on the top hat and just shit on everything. And this car has been sitting in here for that long. <laughs> See, it desperately needs a bit of a clean off. Plus, it's at the point at the moment where it doesn't particularly need to be undercover. Uh, the reason I wanted it undercover and why it was on here in the first place is because I plan on putting a vented bonnet on And because it was going to have an open bonnet, I wanted it to be have an undercover spot to live. But, uh, yeah, long story, which we'll get into in a minute, but needs to get dragged out, dragged up to the shed and given a wash. Look at this poor old girl. Been reduced to a storage unit. <laughs> oh, Lord. Anyway. I'll uh, go get the mower, trusty tractor, and we'll drag it up so I can start talking about it. Dad's moving stuff around again. Even the poor old Trans Am's getting dirty. Trusty old tow rig. Oh. Weapon. Yeehaw! How's that cam? Off tap. All right. Rightio guys, so this is my Series 2 MX-83 Chris Eater. So, I guess we'll uh, start going through what the actual plan for this car was for all you people who are new here. Righto, so last year, after I'd sold my R31, might even been the year before, um, but regardless, uh, after I sold my 31, I was without a drift car uh, for a little while. I, you know, I had the S13s that I've got down there as well. Um, I planned to build those. That fell through, they didn't work out. I ended up parting most of those out. I still kept the shells for when I want to rebuild them because I will probably will build them one day. But uh, so yeah, I didn't have a drift car. Um, after the S13 sagas, I decided I was going to do my Cressida. Um, at that point, I had a Series 1 MX83 Cressida, which you all know is Adam's car now. So uh, what happened is this car came up for sale real cheap from a mate. Um, I thought, Beauty, same color as my series, um, my series one. Plus, I needed the series two K frame for my LS conversion. Um, so I grabbed it off him real cheap as a parts car. Uh, at the time, I said to Adam, like I know, I knew Adam was sort of looking for a Crusader. I was like, look, we got this one real cheap. Um, you want to come have a look at it, see if you want it instead of me. Um, you can have it for what I paid for it. Adam didn't want the series two. He actually wanted the series one. So we sort of came to an agreement, and I sold him my series one, and I kept the series two here instead. So that's how I ended up with the car. Um, so the plan was, at the time, I had that down there, hiding down in the shadows, Tiger Micah VT Series 2 SS. So that SS just had a, uh, you know, LS1 T56 in it. Um, I, was, I was using that as a daily for a little while. Uh, I got that real cheap off a of mate um, and sort of decided, like, really wanted to pull the, the LS1 and the six speed out and put it into a drift car and make sort of a real budget drift car was the, was the idea. So. That's why with this project, I've actually been really logging all of the costs really, really closely. Um, so yeah, the whole idea was to do it real cheap. Um, so as always, one thing led to another. 
instead of just getting an LS1, I decided I wanted to boost it and put it on E85 and this and that. Um, and you know, that's all, it's all still good. It's all part of the plan. I've got my LS1 down there in the, in the shed. Still needs to be rebuilt. Um, oh, well not rebuilt, but probably cammed, but we'll, we'll get, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So LS1 still needs some attention. It's down there in the shed. Um, the TBT6, I actually rebuilt in preparation for the car. Um, I then ended up coming across a TR6060, which is the newer, stronger, bigger six speed. Um, and that TR6060 cost me as much as it cost to rebuild the six, uh, the TBT6. So snapped up the TR6060. Um, so that's going to be going in instead. Um, I've got the turbo for it up there. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to run that turbo or go a bit bigger, but I did buy a T66. Um, I think it's an 84 mil uh, X juicer on the comp, comp wheel. Um, so I've got the turbo. Um, I do have a lot of the parts for this car. Uh, like I've got the motor, got the turbo, got the gearbox, got the car. I've got the conversion kit. Uh, but yeah, this is sort of just how it's stayed. <laughs> and as you can see, filthy needs a clean. All right, so now I guess you're probably at this point wondering what the hell happened? <laughs> so what happened was um, I started building this car. This is obviously, you know, a year ago I was nowhere near as good at doing any sort of fab work or anything. Um, but, you know, I sort of still just took it on, started the car. Um, everything was going along really well. I sort of just hit a wall when it came to the actual chassis. So the problem I had was that there's really not much aftermarket support for the chassis in Australia. Uh, as far as like overseas, you got excessive manufacturing, Serial 9, um, KFD from Russia. Like there are, there are companies, but the import taxes and how much it costs to get parts here is just insane. It's so expensive. So not only that, there's not really any cheap suspension options. You pretty much only real options are like BC, which again is, is more dollars. So what ended up happening is I, I, I did the sums of how much it was going to cost me to finish this car and get it track ready. At that point, I had not been driving for like 12 months. I'd had like 12 months out of the seat and I was really sort of getting bummed and um, getting unmotivated to work on the thing because I knew it was gonna cost me so much money to fix and I hadn't driven for so long. And uh, the dude that I sold my R31 to who pulled all the running gear out to put in his EH Holden, um, he had the shell sitting there. He ended up offering my shell back to me, sort of for a really good price. Um, and I still had so many RB parts left over. So I did the sums. It was gonna be cheaper for me to just park the Cressida up in the shed buy my 31 shell back and rebuild my 31, which it was. It was. It worked out cheaper for me to actually rebuild my 31 than it was to finish the Cressida. So that is why I've got the 31 back and the poor old Cressida is in the state that it's in at the moment. So that's pretty much where we're at with the Cressida. Um, I do have some updates for it and then we'll give it a wash. So where the car's at, as you can see, I've got my intercooler mounted up. Um, I want it sort of just sat on, so. I've, uh, I've relocated the fuse box. I've tucked all the wiring up under the guards, like up right up out of the way for big wheels and big clearance, but I'm pretty sure I'm still gonna have to cut out these guards. So still waiting to do that. Um, I've cut out most of the front for intercooler piping and such, and just airflow in general. Um, I made a bolt-in, bolt-out radiator support panel, which is pretty average. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm much better at fab work these days than I used to be. Um, I've pulled all the Series 2 brake lines out because Series 2 is ABS, so I pulled all the ABS stuff out. Um, I did buy a Series 1 parts car, which is down in the paddock there as well, you might be able to see. Uh, I bought the Series 1 parts car for a few things. I want corner markers in my front guards, which is a Series 1 thing. Uh, also, I needed the non-ABS brake lines, all that sort of stuff. Um, so that's all got to go into the car. Uh, inside, I stripped out all the back. My plan was originally to leave the front intact. Um, so I've just stripped the back for now, mounted the battery box. Uh, I've made a bodgy ass seat rail, which is gonna have to be changed again anyway. Um, and since changing to TR6060 from the T56, I'm now actually gonna have to cut out the trans tunnel to fit the 6060. So where I'm at now with the car is, um, Sort of deciding what direction i wanted to go with it so originally it did start as a very budget basic throw together build idea um i'm at the point now where i'm sort of thinking maybe uh i've got to pull you know strip the front to cut out the trans tunnel to make a new tunnel to fit the tr6060 anyway 
So I'm thinking about maybe just completely stripping the car now, uh, getting rid of all the body deadening, redoing that trans tunnel. I'm thinking about just cutting the front off and tube fronting it now. Uh, obviously, again, I'm, I know a lot more and I'm better at fab work now um, and I would like to get the practice in. I am thinking about going to a rear mount radiator. I've had a look at where I would mount it and how I would cut out the back to, to make it and make the back window out of perspex and duct it. I've had a look at all that. So I'm thinking about going to a rear mount radiator to get uh, the radiator out of the way of the front. Um, thinking about cam in the LS now. Um, and yeah, it's sort of, sort of going for around that 600 wheel horsepower mark on E85 boosted LS with this car, eventually. <laughs> um, it will get finished, I'm not going to abandon it, but it's still, I'm still in that stalemate of uh, aftermarket support for the chassis. So I have been talking to RB Factory about potentially trying to develop some adjustable rear arms for the car um, that would be Australian made and available. Um, so I'm hoping that him and I can sort of get there as far as if he can develop and we can uh, research and de develop that product um, so that there is some Australian support for the chassis. So not only that, um, if he can get in and start doing dual caliper kits for them the same way he does for the Skylines and for the Sylvias, uh, you know, handbrake mounts, all that sort of aftermarket support that he has for the R31, uh, which was so good for us uh, back when no one was doing R31 aftermarket support. So. If we can get in, if, if he's uh, you know willing to, to start doing stuff with the Crusader, that's gonna be awesome and that's gonna help me along um, as far as having some aftermarket support for the chassis, uh, as well as everyone else in the Crusader community, which would be awesome. So, what I still need for the car, I still need a clutch set up, even if I'm going to leave the motor stock, I still need a new clutch. Um, still need, uh, obviously, complete suspension setup, uh, coilovers, I need front end kit. Uh, my plan is to go R33 uh, calipers with BA rotors, so I've got the calipers down there. I've got a lot of this stuff, so I do have a lot of stuff for this car already there. It's just got to all come together and there's got to be a bit of money spent, but um, it will get there. So I have actually also mounted the fuel cell and started mounting the surge tank and started on the fuel system. Um, that's sort of where I was up to when I parked the car. Um, but if I do decide to go remount radiator, this will all get changed again anyway. Um, most of this boot floor will just get cut out and braced with some uh, box or some tube. So I've got a lot of ideas of how I want to go forward with the car, but obviously it's just going to be hopefully still fairly budget because I'll be doing most, like pretty much all the work myself. But uh, it's just going to be a bit more time consuming. But I don't know, it's sort of just going to be a, a see where we come, <laughs> where, where it goes when we get to it. So like the other thing is I bought the KE conversions, LS1 conversion kit for it. I don't like how far forward the LS1 sits in the bay. Uh, you could get it way further back to the firewall if you wanted to, but it's probably going to mean notching the cross member, uh, potentially a custom sump um, or sump modification. So it's just a fair bit of work that's got to go into it, which at the, at the moment, as you've seen, like I just don't have the time and I don't have the money to pour into this car currently. So um, that's pretty much why it is has been parked up dormant. So sorry to all you guys who have been trying to follow the build, but it's just one of those things where it's, um, it's just too much money for that I need to throw at it and so much time at the moment to get it to where I want it. Uh, I have thought about just chucking it together Aspo again, um, just to get it running, but I feel like it's a pretty moot point. Um, I'd rather build the Sylvia. Do I want to, like, if, I, if I'm gonna do another just budget throw together a car to drive, I'd rather it be the Sylvia and what I want to do to that. And I'd rather, you know, keep this and just slowly work at getting it to where I want it. All right, so updates for the car as far as the build coming along. I have a clutch pedal. So, as most of you Crusader people would know, Crusaders didn't come manual. You pretty much have to get uh, KE Conversions clutch pedal set up or um, this is actually, I'm pretty sure, a GX81 pedal. Um, so it is actually a genuine Chaser Mark II, whatever they are, um, clutch pedal. So my plan with that pedal is to use the old master cylinder that came out of the Cruiser when we converted it, because it was a manual and it's been converted to auto. So we do have the old clutch pedal and master cylinder out of that. Now the 80 series master is the right size bore for the TR6060 and the T56 concentric slave. So if I can, uh, it should just bolt to that pedal and it should all just bolt in. So because of the, the way the chassis cross over, the, the firewall has the provision for the clutch pedal. So that pedal is literally just a bolt-in item, which is awesome. Um, and it cost me nothing. I actually traded Adam a few things off my Series 1 Crusader for his because he uh, had a few 
things he wasn't happy with. So he racked a heap of parts off my Series 1 Crusader and he traded me the clutch pedal for a heap of stuff. So that cost me nothing. So I can't remember where we were at with cost with this, uh, but I'm just going to put it up in the corner here so that you can see from the last episode where I was up to a cost. So that cost me nothing and I now have a clutch pedal, uh, which is a big thing for, for the Crusaders, always doing Crusader work. So um, KE Conversions clutch pedal is what Adam ended up putting in his and it's quite nice, it's, it's really good. But um, obviously this is a cheaper option for me, having that I already have the master and uh, now I have a pedal that cost me nothing. So another cost update is you would probably hopefully remember the Ray's Volks uh, progressive mesh GRA that came on my series one Crusader that I, uh, I kept when I sold that to Adam uh, to sell on to try and get some money back for this project so I ended up selling them they have gone to a very good home um, they will be going on a Sephiro the bloke is planning on completely relipping them everything I wanted to do them but I couldn't justify spending the money on them um, but he gave me $800 for those so I got 800 bucks for those very rare 90s Jap Jap wheels so I was hoping to get a bit more for them but um, they were for sale for a while no one seemed to be very interested in them they weren't very good sizes they needed to be resized which costs a lot of money so uh, ended up getting 800 which is still a pretty good deal um, like I, I got a pretty good deal I reckon he got a good deal so I'm uh, very excited for he's going to keep sending me updates on those wheels when they're actually resized on that car and I'm very excited to see how they come out so that's a big chunk of money to come back on top of that I also sold Adam a set of stock um, Grande 15 inch Grande wheels for his Crusader just because obviously you've seen Adam's 1J Crusader the wheels on it are ludicrous like absolutely stupid so uh, I sold him those 15s just so that he has a set of wheels to get him out of trouble if he gets you know pinned by the cops or if he needs to for roadworthy um, you know all that sort of stuff so he's got that, that spare set of wheels for if he needs them so I sold them to Adam for 150 so that's another 150 that I've got, that I've got back um, so yeah, like it's it's where it where it sits at the moment, um, considering what it owes me after I have those accounted for those sort of those sort of things. Um, it's just still you know really budget coming along, and if I decide that I want to uh, sort of refab the front and move the LS back and tube it, um, that'll all be me doing my own work. Um, I'll probably end up making my own engine mounts, which means I might sell the K conversions LS conver like conversion kit. Uh, so I'll probably end up getting a bit of money back for that as well. Same with doing the rear mount. Um, like if I want to fab up the rear to do the rear mount, I'll, again, I'll be doing that all myself. Um, doing the, the window and the ducting out of Perspex. Um, again, it's a lot of where I want to go with the car as far as going like that. Um, same with doing the trans tunnel. It's not going to cost me heaps more. It's still going to be very budget. Um, it's just going to be a lot more time and it's going to be really good practice for me as far as fab work goes. So I'm pretty excited to do it that way. So I've got down here my LS all wrapped up. I've got my TR6060 there behind it. Um, so I've got the motor and gearbox, like I was saying. I've, I've got a lot of stuff for this build. There's not a lot, more, like, a lot more to spend in reality for how much it's cost me. Um, yeah, doing pretty well. So like I was saying, guys, the big cost that's left in the project is the suspension setup, the steering setup, um, the clutch. I'm going to have to get a pretty decent clutch, which is going to cost me a little bit. Um, you know, injectors... And that's really it, just materials for fab and that. Um, obviously, cam and springs if I decide to go that way with it. And I've still got a fair bit of the fuel system to finish off, which is going to cost a bit. Um, apart from that, it's just like diggly things like you all know happens with the build. I still estimate to get this car even on the track, it's um, still going to cost me about 5k. So again, it's just one of those things where I'm hoping I can sort of get to it this year. Oh, not this year. Oh, actually, while you're watching it, it is this year. Um, so 2020, I'm hoping I can get back to it at some point in the year and uh, start making some more progress on it. And, uh, but I would also like in 2020 to build the Sylvia. So we'll just have to see how we go. But anyway, this will be uh, what I plan on doing is a Series 2 bar on the front. I'm going to do Series 1 lights and corner lights. Um, and I'm going to do seri yeah, Series 1 corner markers. And I'm probably going to leave the back. I thought about converting the back to Series 1, but it's just a shitload of work that I don't really need to do. So instead of that, I'll probably just leave it Series 2. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I'll bodge up some sort of body kit and do a big drag wing on it probably. <laughs> I plan on doing a vented bonnet. That is just mostly just for airflow through the bay. Uh, boosted LS, as we know with the Cruiser, generates a fair bit of heat. So I just wanted to do vented bonnet to get the, get the heat out. So... So the original plan was for me and Adam to both build these uh, Crusaders collectively at sort of the same time into sort of budget drift cars so that we could both start doing a lot more driving together and that sort of thing. 
Um, but then obviously this went the way it did. As you've seen, Adam's just got way out of hand to the point where it's just about like show car worthy now. And um, so yeah, I ended up with the 31. So that's what happened there. But we chose, <laughs> we chose the Crusaders because they're just about the cheapest rear wheel drive Japanese platform that you can buy in Australia. They are plentiful, they are everywhere, they are dirt cheap, they are worth nothing. Um, the diff, like the rear ends in them are strong enough. Um, so all of them are autos as well. So most of them haven't been, you know, absolutely P plate raped sort of thing like that. Most of them are fairly straight, fairly tidy because they only came out auto. So they're not super, they haven't been super appealing to P platers up until sort of fairly recently, they're becoming more popular. But the point is there's plenty of them around, they're cheap as, mostly pretty straight so it's really easy to get really cheap replacement panels and parts and stuff for them so that's why we've chosen the uh the crusader to go there but uh at this point me neither me and adam have ever actually driven one so we have no idea what they're actually like to drive for. so it'd be interesting but obviously adam's gonna find out a lot faster than i am i would love to go full cage but that is a big dollar thing it's uh a bit more <laughs> it's a it's a bit out of my reach as far as my own skills go at this point so i won't be doing it myself i don't think and it's just a bit too much money. But uh, again, it's one of those things we just have to wait and see. But that's an update on the Crusader guys, where it's at. Uh, a bit of a price sort of update and adjustment um, of the project. Uh, I do get asked about this car quite a bit. So again, I do apologize to you guys who have followed the build. It's just, yeah, it's just unfeasible for me at the moment at sort of where I am, uh, where Rex and I am with trying to get this business happening. Uh, um, you know, it's just, it's just too much money and time right now. I just don't have it, so. That's a Crusader. It's not going anywhere. They're worth nothing. So I like I thought about even I have thought about just selling it and putting that money into something else, but what would I sell it for? It's probably worth about three hundred dollars. So <laughs> I'll be keeping this one in the series one and I will be finishing this build. It might take a long time, but it will get done. So I'm gonna put you on time lapse while I give it a wash, wash all the crap off it. Um, hopefully that's pretty satisfying. Alrighty guys, I hope that was as satisfying for you to watch as it was for me to do. <laughs> it uh, actually looks like a car again. It resembles a slightly less dirty pile of trash now, <laughs> as opposed to the very dirty poopy pile of trash it was previously. So another thing I did forget to mention that's gonna be uh, an expensive part of the build is gonna be wheels. Uh, I obviously don't have any five by one fourteen wheels, um, but you know, apart from that, I've got, with the parts car, I've got a second set of rear calipers for the dual caliper setup and. I've got a lot, a lot of that stuff there. Um, it will need paint as well. Do that myself. Uh, we do actually do a fair bit of painting around here. Um, I will just get the cheapest, easiest to match color that I can for this thing, I think. It's, um, it'll be respectable, but this is not gonna be a pretty car. It is, I wanna be able to absolutely drive the shit out of this thing and um, you know bang doors and, and have a lot of fun in it. So anyway, that's uh, an update for the Crusita. Um, sorry, it's taken so long been a, a very long time since we've done anything with the Crusader so like I said I thought while I answer a lot of people's questions that I've been getting asked about what's going on with this car I thought for a lot of the new viewers I should probably just fill them in on what is going on with this car from start to finish so as you can see it doesn't owe me a lot of money where it sits I have most of the major components that I need for it um, and hopefully fingers crossed this year uh, we can get in and and sort of get into it a bit more me and Rex so um, that's the plan but We'll just have to see how we go, but it's gonna be sticking around. So thanks for watching guys. Hit subscribe, like, comment, and I'll see you on the next one.